Welcome to the safety video for the fall of 2011. This video is designed for any person who takes responsibility for equipment or athletes who row out of Three Rivers Rowing Association, especially TRA members, any coaches, coxswains, and scullers. All TRA members should have a liability waiver on file. Guests or non-members must also sign a liability waiver before using any TRA equipment. These waivers can be found in the copy room at Washington's Landing or by talking to the office. Note that this waiver is different from the U.S. Rowing Waiver. All TRA members and participants of any TRA program also need to demonstrate that they are comfortable around the water by completing a TRA swim test. Any questions about this test can be directed to Jen Grebe in the office. Most pool locations allow people to come and test out in front of their lifeguard at low or no cost. An approved crew leader needs to be in any multiple person club boat that plans to row unaccompanied by launches and or coaches. All crew leaders must have a minimum of one year of rowing experience and additional restrictions can be found on the crew leader applications which can be found online. Crew leaders are responsible for the safety of the crew they go out with. Therefore, they must consult and comply with the parameters of the safety matrix, including being aware of current river flow, temperature, and expected weather conditions during the outing. Crew leaders also need to be familiar with local traffic patterns and river hazards, including bridges and buoys. If there are if they are not the one coxing, they must ensure that the coxswain in their boat is experienced and familiar with local river traffic patterns and hazards. Sweep crew leaders must be present to take out pairs, fours, and eights, and sculling crew leaders for doubles and quads. For non-coxed or sculling boats, the crew leader has to be the bow rower and the one responsible for steering the boat. All crew leader applications can be turned in to Rick Brown. If you are interested in using TRA sculling equipment and singles, it is necessary to test out of a sculling certification by an approved TRA staff person. This certification requires you to demonstrate basic maneuvering, safety, and boat handling skills. All sculling related questions can be directed to Joy Nix. The safety matrix regulations created by the TRA Safety Committee can be found online or posted at both boathouses. It's based on water flow from the most recently posted observed data from the NOAA at the Sharpsburg gauge and based on water temperature from the USGS data at Acmetonia. During the fall and spring seasons, flow and water temperature are posted at both boathouses daily. At Millvale, it's posted on the downstream side of the boathouse facing the bays, and at Washington's Landing, it is posted inside by the side door that opens to the TRA parking lot. Note that it is posted daily, but the water conditions may change throughout the day. Flow will increase with rainfall and snow melt, and water temperature will continue to drop throughout the fall and will continue to stay low into the first part of the spring. Know where to find the values online or on your smartphone and keep checking them. To find out what zone you're in, find the zones that the current water temperature and flow fall under. And if they're different, select the more restrictive zone. In daylight conditions, for zones 1 through 4, you can move one zone to the left. Once you know the zone, you can look down to see what types of boats are allowed out. If a coach is needed, not just a crew leader, and if the coach needs a specific certification, how many boats per launch, if they need PFDs, etc. To give you a sense of what the different levels of water flow look like, here are some videos. This is a video of the Allegheny at 30,000 cubic feet per second. This is a video of the Allegheny at 40,000 cubic feet per second. This is a video of the Allegheny at 50,000 cubic feet per second. And this is a video of the Allegheny at 60,000 cubic feet per second.
And finally, this is a video of the Allegheny at 80,000 cubic feet per second. Note that the flow will always be higher in the center of the river. The safety matrix is the first thing we consider if we're trying to go out on the water, but it should not be the only thing you consider. Just because it says you can row doesn't mean you can. There are plenty of other weather and water conditions that can keep us on land. You can easily check for weather conditions on your computer, weather device, or using a smartphone app before going out on the water. Remember that wind going against the flow, in our case from west to east, can create dangerous whitecaps. It can also be difficult to row or paddle even if the wind is blowing downstream when it's over 10 miles per hour. If there's a storm, remember to wait to have at least 20 minutes clear of thunder or lightning before launching. If it's raining or cold, it may be possible to go on the water, but to prevent the risk of hyperthermia, make sure your crew is wearing appropriate clothes to row, cox, or be in a launch, so they stay as dry and warm as possible. Do not row in fog unless your visibility to shore is at least 100 yards. There are also certain times of the season when there will be an increase in water traffic. There may be times when it's not wise to go on the main river. Use common sense. If you have the slightest doubt about going out, do not go out or do not row very far from the boathouse. Keep an eye out for gathering clouds, changes in wind speed and direction, temperature changes, and other boats heading back to the boathouse. Before crews go on the water each season, all team members should view the U.S. Rowing Safety video. This video goes over important safety information and what to do in the case of an emergency. If you or your coach does not have a copy of this, you can talk to Jen Grebe in the office about using the TRA copy. Members are able to reserve boats ahead of time to ensure their equipment will be available. Therefore, if you plan to use TRA small boat equipment, please remember to check the reservation system on Regatta Central so that you don't use equipment that's already scheduled for use. There is a computer by the main entrance at Washington's Landing specifically set up for this purpose. You can also access the reservation system on your smartphone. If planning extra practices in large boats, please make sure to run your equipment request through RIC. There may be other programs needing similar equipment, so there may require some coordination. All members who row out of TRA in small boats, whether using TRA equipment or their own personal equipment, need to sign out on the safety log by the bays. This informs staff and other rowers of who is out on the water at any given time. Remember to fill out the log completely with the date, what boat you're taking out, the time you're launching, who you are, the time you're planning to get back, and if you have a coach with you, and where you're going. When you return, please also remember to sign back in using the log. When you get back from your row, make sure to check your equipment for any damage, as well as wipe down your boat, especially the water line, and put the boats back properly on the racks. And remember, don't forget your oars on the dock. When going out on the water, it's important to be prepared. If you will be on the water before sunrise or after sunset, remember that lights are required. For rowing shells, all lights are white with a flashing light in the stern and a steady light in the bow. Bow lights must always be fixed to the boat. This applies to all shells. The stern lights must be fixed to the boat also, except for stern cox boats. Make sure coxswains have PFDs with them. Also, it's a good idea for coxswains to have some spare parts and tools with them if possible, should equipment issues occur on the water. Note that if the safety matrix requires, rowers and paddlers should wear PFDs. Coaches launches and dragon boats have different standards for boat lights. On the bow, they need to have red and green lights, green for starboard and red for port. In the stern, they must have a steady white light. Coaches should be prepared for emergencies. In their launch, there should be PFDs for each rower, enough gas to support the practice, a cell phone, and space for rowers should a rescue be needed. In certain zones, other safety items are required, such as space blankets. Please remember to make sure that your boat has a paddle. Other safety items that coaches might consider taking, depending on their team and the time of year, include spare parts and tools, extra lights, a spotlight, 
first aid kit, bailers, extra water, or other items. Know your team's emergency needs and be prepared. Remember that you are responsible for keeping the people and equipment you take out safe. If you need to use a TRA launch, remember that all use needs to be approved ahead of time by Rick Brown. When doing pressure pieces in the channel, please keep them downstream of the 31st Street Bridge. Know that your piece may be interrupted by crews coming into the channel or by other crews who are also rowing in the channel. No team has priority over channel space, so make sure to be courteous to each other. A general rule is for all crews and scullers to stay on the starboard side of the channel, whether rowing up or downstream. Boats without coxswains have the right of way over those with coxswains. Be courteous by controlling your wake from launches, especially around other boats and the docks. Know the traffic pattern on the river. When leaving the channel, exit upstream and continue through the 40th Street Bridge before turning to go up or down the river. When entering the channel, wait to be upstream of the power lines before crossing to enter the channel. Be mindful to stay to the island side of the arch when entering. On the river, stay on starboard while rowing. Stay to port of green buoys and to starboard of red buoys. Know which arches to go through up versus downstream. Know where shallow areas are and how to avoid them. In general, be predictable with your behavior so that other boats and crews know how to maneuver around you as needed. Around marinas, try to keep launches that create wake as far away as possible from the docked boats while maintaining traffic pattern. Also, have crews stay 30 or more feet away from the docks to have room to react should a boat come in or out. Be respectful and avoid using megaphones, especially battery-powered ones, around houseboats and houses or condos that are along shore. As a reference, a typical barge is almost 400 yards long and 35 yards wide. They have a white light in the back and green and red lights in front, but there are typically no lights the length of the boat. They also have very low visibility around turns. Please be careful to stay clear of their path and do not cross in front of one if its bow is within a thousand meters of you. Docking has priority over launching. If other crews are trying to dock or launch, please walk your boat to the farthest end. Also make sure to tie in on the water if crews are waiting. Be courteous to other teams, coaches, rowers, and coxswains on land and on the water. No one's perfect, but if we help each other out and communicate clearly, things will be safer and faster on the docks. When docking, scullers, coxswains, and bows should remember it is better to miss the dock and or ask for help then hit the dock and damage equipment. Please be careful and come into the dock slowly. Should a boat capsize or swamp, coaches or crew leaders should immediately account for your crew and distribute PFDs. Please also call 911 for help. This links to River Rescue. Know the landmarks around you in case you need to give instructions on how help can find you. Once you're in the water, you can roll the boat to use the hull as a flotation device. This is necessary because composite oars take on water and therefore float for only a short period of time. In the fall, one of the greatest risks is for hypothermia. Coaches should refresh themselves on how to handle these situations and be prepared for them. Remember to report damage and unsafe practices. Try to fill these forms out at the time the damage occurs or is noticed or at the time of the incident. Incident report forms are available online or next to the side door to the youth bays. Damage report forms are available on the door to the repair bay. Please don't assume that a form has been filled out. We'd prefer to have more members report damaged equipment or incidents than not enough. As a final note, Remember when using the lifts to be mindful of where you are placing them in relation to the other boats in the bays. Please have someone on the team who has experience using the lifts involved in getting the boat out or into the rack. If you notice a lift not working properly, immediately bring over another lift to take over for the one that's not working. Then please report the damaged lift using the damage report forms. Thank you for taking the time to watch the safety video for the fall of 2011. 
We hope that this information will help all rowers and paddlers out of Three Rivers Rowing keep themselves safe this fall.